Hi, my name is Bill Raymond, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to set up Continuous Integration Continuous Deployment, or CICD, using Visual Studio, Visual Studio Team Services, and Azure. And we're going to do all of this using a Git repository that we set up in Visual Studio. So let's go ahead and get started. Before we start the CICD process, there's a few things that you'll need installed. One, you'll want a copy of Visual Studio installed. I'm using Visual Studio 2017. If I'm not mistaken, 2015 should work. However, you might need to install the Visual Studio for Git services separately. The next thing that you'll need is a Git repository. I'm using the Visual Studio Team Services Git repository because this offers CI/CD uh, as a free solution for smaller projects, sort of one person teams, if you will. And then the other thing that I have is a Microsoft Azure setup. And I'm using a, a free plan that I got from Dev Essentials uh, on the Microsoft website. So you can just search for Dev Essentials and you can set up your free plan for Azure. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to do something pretty basic to get started. So we're going to go File, New, Project. And you are creating your project here in Visual Studio first. However, you could be creating this in Azure first. You could create it in Visual Studio Team Services first. It's really up to you. But I'm going to do it this way. So I'm going to choose Web and choose an ASP.NET Web application. Down here at the bottom right, make sure you say Create Git repository. So you want to make sure you have a Git repository for this project. Click OK. You can choose MVC and basically leave all the other options the same and click OK. At this point, all we're doing is creating a Visual Studio project. It's a web application and Microsoft provides a little small application just to kind of let you see how it all works. So it creates a few web pages and things like that. Now that our project's created, I can come over here to the Solution Explorer and you can see it created a number of folders for me. I'm going to go ahead and run this project. So what should happen at this point is Microsoft Visual Studio will build the project and it will start the server and everything that's needed right here on my local computer. At this point, we're not doing anything on any servers. We're just making sure the application works. And this is sort of the app that got installed with our project. So it's just a basic, simple website. So I'll go ahead and close this down. And now we're going to add this to source control uh, up in Visual Studio. So we're going to take our source control project that's only on our computer and send that up to a Git repository on Visual Studio Team Services. So we'll go to the View menu and choose Team Explorer. That should show up somewhere around here, under, which is right next to Solution Explorer. So you'll find that you can easily tab between both of these in most scenarios. So now we're going to go ahead and click Sync. And I'll choose Publish Git Repo. And what's happening now is Visual Studio is connecting to my Git Repo and you can see it has Web Application 1 there and it's uploading that to Visual Studio Team Services. Oh, I didn't press the Publish button. That ought to do the trick. So it's now uploading the project to Visual Studio Team Services. I'll start reloading here. There we go, there's Web Application 1. Now it looks like it's still publishing this project up. There we go. And it's finished there. Now we're all done. So we have a local project in a Git repository on our computer. And then we also have a copy up here on the Visual Studio Team Services site. And I can go ahead and click on that and I can see the code and all that good stuff. 
So one of the things that you'll see here when you select it, it says use continuous integration. So if I choose set up build, it's going to ask you how you want to get, how you want to set this up. And you can choose Azure web app. And now you can see that it's uh, setting up all of this detail here uh, on Visual Studio Team Services. It's actually asking for some subscription information and, and all that good stuff. So that's one way that you can do it. What I'm going to do is show you another approach, which is to get the project from Visual Studio Team Services using Azure. I think it's a little bit easier this way. So basically, uh, where I'm going to bring us back to here is we created a project in Visual Studio, and we published that project, which is this web application one, up to Visual Studio Team Services. Now what we're going to do is go to our Azure dashboard. And there's a number of ways that we can get started. You can see you can have an app service. You can get that set up here. Uh, there might be other links, for example, right here. But I'm just going to show you one way to do it so that you always know that you have access to the right option. I'm going to click the plus sign, and now it's going to show all of my options. And now I can just type web, and what will happen is it will show all the different options here. I'm going to choose web app. This isn't using SQL or anything like that right now, so we'll just use web app. First, we need to create the web app. And this is one of the reasons for why I like doing this in Azure as opposed to Visual Studio. I'm actually going to give this an app name, and the app name does not have to be the name of the web app in the Visual Studio solution. So, if I come back here, you can see it's called Web Application 1 in Visual Studio. However, here I might want to give it a different name. So I'll call this YouTube Web App CI CD. And you need, you need to not only give this a unique name for your solution, but it has to, it's going against Azure Websites.net. So it's basically this needs to be unique throughout all of Azure. Choose your subscription, create new, okay? And then finally, and you can turn on application insights or some uh, options there. And then over here, sorry, you have to choose a location. And I'm just gonna go ahead and choose this location. For each one of these options, when you're picking them, you might find that you need to set something else up for the first time. I'll just go ahead and click Create. And you can see this little thing here by the notifications bell there, and it's letting you know that it's building the project. We'll just wait for this to finish. Okay, our solution was deployed. So if I come here to Notifications and I choose the informational area, you can see the deployment YouTube Web App CICD was successful. To access this, I can come over here to the left side where it says All Resources, but it may not show up there for you yet. It might take a moment to, for it to show up. So what you can do here is go to Search Resources at the top of the page, type the name of your app, and select it this way. Just to be sure your app is running, you can look up here at the top and you can see it says Stop. That's a good sign. Uh, and if you wanted to run it, you could just by um, running the start button if it wasn't already there. And you can come down here and look at any server errors. So I'm going to scroll back up to the top of the page and notice there's a link to the URL. If you click this link, it'll open a new tab in your browser. And I'm going to go ahead and do that now. There. So what's happened is the app is empty right now. Because remember, we first created our app in Visual Studio. Then we uploaded the app here to Visual Studio Team Services. Then in Azure, we created 
a brand new app. But what we didn't do is we did not actually connect this app to Visual Studio Team Services. That's what we're going to do right now. On the left side of our app, there's a whole bunch of different options. What I'm going to do is point you to this area here that says continuous delivery. Now I'm recording this video in the month of May and they're 2017. And I know Microsoft's about to make some big announcements at their build conference this week. So hopefully everything I'm showing you doesn't change, but you should find this thing called continuous delivery may or may not say preview. I'll go ahead and select that. Next, I'll click Configure. So the first thing that comes up is this kind of wizard, and you have to choose a number of different options. First, you choose your repository. Now, I already connected my Visual Studio Team Services account. If you did not connect yours, then this screen wouldn't appear. There'd be a link that asks you to log into Visual Studio Team Services, do a few steps, and then you can come back and use this. It's pretty straightforward. So we'll just choose Team Services, this, but the project that I'm working with is not this project, it's this one, the Web Application One. And we'll use the same repository name and we'll use the master branch. Click OK. The next thing we're going to do is configure continuous delivery. And what it's asking is what type of framework should I use? This is ASP.NET, so just go ahead and click OK. Now you can set up load testing, and this will actually have a number of servers ping your app really fast, is my understanding, to just make sure that your app is actually uh, working and it, and it won't uh, crash or, or get overloaded by uh, too many people accessing your app. I don't know as much detail about this yet because I'm still learning. So now I'm going to go here to deploy and configure deployment. Now what's asking, what this is asking is if we want to deploy to staging first, but I'm just going to choose no. We're going to deploy to uh, production and click OK. Finally, we just click the OK button down at the bottom of the page. So what's going to happen now is continuous delivery is going to get set up. And you can see this notification is showing the, the spinning, sorry, the, the little blue line here, and it's giving us these sort of glowing dots here. Okay, our solution is now in Azure. So we created it in Visual Studio, we uploaded it to Visual Studio Team Services, and through continuous integration, what we've done is we've moved our project from Visual Studio Team Services over here to Azure. Now, I still have the app selected. You can see that at the top of the page. I'm going to go to the overview icon. And the first thing I'm going to do here is just restart the app. Sometimes your app won't show the latest features until you restart it. So I'll just go ahead and click that. And there, it was successful. So now what I'll do is click the URL. It will open in a new tab and we'll see if it ran. And it's waiting for the app. It's probably just starting over again because I pressed the restart option. And there we go. Now you can see here is that same app that we originally created in Visual Studio. So the next thing we're going to do is look at how we can push our changes up from Visual Studio and have them occur right away inside of the Azure solution. Here we're back in Visual Studio, and I'm going to make a change to the application in hopes that it will automatically update in Azure. Let's go ahead and just make a very simple change. I'll come over here to the Views folder in my Solution Explorer and find this index.cshtml file. It normally just has a heading at the top that says ASP.NET, and then it describes it. So I'm just going to change this to Hello world. And I'll also change this text to pushed to Azure using CI CD automatically. Well, automatically pushed. 
Okay, so I'll just go ahead now and come to my Team Explorer and submit this change. Okay, and I'll just go ahead and commit and sync the changes. Visual Studio right now is synchron synchronizing everything up to Visual Studio Team Services and pushing the changes. There, you can see it successfully committed those changes. Once your application is built, you'll receive an email that looks something like this. It lets you know that it succeeded and whether or not there are any errors or warnings. Having received that email, which by the way, it only took about one minute before it went through, I can now go back to my Azure portal. Now remember the last time we did this, I had to restart the solution. Uh, you're typically not going to have to restart after you start this continuous de deployment feature. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on the URL. And you can see here's our new hello world text with our text that we said automatically pushed to Azure using CI CD. So that's basically it. Your workflow will look something like this. You'll create the project in Visual Studio. You'll make sure that you're using source control. You'll publish that to team services. And then in Azure, you're going to set up a app that then accepts your continuous delivery using this continuous delivery option right here. And you'll set that up by connecting Azure and your project together. Thank you for watching this video. Please press the like button if this was a useful video for you and please subscribe to our channel. It's really helpful for us if you're looking for more videos. Thank you.